Hello to all my people, and if you're watching live, checking us out on YouTube, or listening on your favorite podcast provider, you are most definitely my people. Welcome to another episode of Botch Bots and Chair Shots. I'm your host, a chef by trade and a mark by choice. I am the Will Gray, and joining me tonight, he is the conqueror of colonizers. He is Mr. Him, the Big D. He is Tiberius Asante. Tiberius, how are you, brother? Thanks for coming on and chatting about some wrestling, man. Hey, man. What's going on, man? Doing all right. Doing all right. So I... uh I always like these conversations. It kind of gives me a everybody's kind of story about how they got into wrestling, how they became who they are today and everything. And I always start at the very beginning of it. For me, early 90s, WCW, NWA days, Attitude Era, I was a teenager. By the time I got to college, was ruthless, aggressive, TNA impact stuff. What is your earliest memories as a young wrestling fan? Uh, earliest memory was Kane ripping off that steel cage door. For the uh, that's when uh, the match was Stone Cold, I think it was a Bad Blood when he debuted. That was like iconic to me. Like it, it's stemmed under my head. That's one of those moments. Uh, it's got to be Kane. Like that's yeah. just one of those iconic wrestling moments. Um, so as you as you progressed, you were a fan. Eventually, you had to have that realistic shot where you were like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to be a pro wrestler. When you decided to, you wanted to try to do it, what was that process like getting into training and stuff? I mean, the process was, uh, it was definitely different. Like, because, uh, you know, at first I was a yarder, you know. And then I finally had found the opportunity when I came down to Delaware to actually get some professional training. So I actually got I started with 1CW and that, that train, like, Taking that training was a whole nother level. Like it was a, a a different world and a rude awakening in a way. So I uh, started there and it's been awesome. That was like 2015. Yeah, and then I took some time off for a little bit. So when you first got into the the school and the the what was the training program like um, schedule wise? Was it just go go go? Was it certain nights of the week? Um, what was it like when you dove into the, the training part of it? Uh, first, all right. So like with one CW, which was, uh, it was spine busters at the time. And, uh, they did, I think it was once or twice a week, but I could make it once a week at the time. And, um, that was like, let's see, I think it was from five to seven or seven to nine, I think like two hours of just, um, a lot of drills, a lot of drills, a lot of drop downs, a lot of, yeah, a lot of getting your your, your cardio right and your, your win right. For sure. Um, so let's kind of start diving into kind of the meat and potatoes of your career now. When you look at somewhere, you just, you and I were just talking about, you and Tony just locked up Atlantic All-Star Wrestling. Y'all were going for the Tri-State Championship. Um, let's start there. Um, when you're working against somebody like Tony, and you're in Atlantic. Um, how? What's the crowd like? What's the vibe like with the promotion? How was the? Uh, how was the show? The crowd was on fire, actually. Like, like when I came, when I hit that curtain, like at first, you know, what I mean, like the reaction was kind of subtle, but then, like I real, like I got them hyped, you know what I'm saying? And their reaction was just crazy. And then when Tony came out, because he's such a, you know, such a dickhead, like they were just like the, they they were giving him a lot of stuff, like. Yeah, I heard El Stupido, um, Loser, Chick. Like, they were giving him so much heat, and it was awesome. So I, when I was, I was doing my due diligence, looking over your stuff, checking out where you've worked, kind of doing my homework on my side, I've noticed you've kind of been up and down that East Coast quite a bit. Um, when you go, when you're in Delaware or when you come – Further south, do you see a big difference change as you come further south in the territories with the crowds, how they respond to you guys in the ring? Uh, do they expect a different type of work? Do they want you to be more mouthy? Um, do you see a difference as you come further south from the crowds? Do they change as you go into different territories? Uh, it definitely changes. So, like, so we'll start from the top to the bottom. Like, Jersey. Jersey is Jersey's different. Jersey, you, you, they love indie. Like they love indie stuff. Um, you might find a few promotions that still, you know, love their, their family friendly and that old school style, which I, that's 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 awesome. Um, then you got, you know, you got Delaware. Um, that that whole thing is just one CW, and that's family oriented, and they love 
you know, the old school style. Like, they loved it when God Rest His Soul and King Kong Bundy were coming around. It was just, they loved it, you know. Like Tony Island and stuff like that. Yeah, they liked the old school, old school. Um, and then, like, when you get to, like, uh, when I was in Pelham, North Carolina, uh, for uh, Jimmy Love's promotion, uh, Pure Pro Wrestling, that's a different crowd. Like, that's like that's all South. So, I definitely got some heat down there when I when I came down there. <laughs> you get into the Carolinas, you get into that wrestling territory. Those yeah, old Jim Crockett, yeah, yeah. those two Jim Crockett territories, man. Yes, sir. And then, like, uh, and then, like, still working with Jimmy, like, because he goes, he, he'll bounce from VA to North Carolina to West, uh, like, Rocky Mount VA. So, like, that crowd's different, too. Rocky Mount, that's, like, a family crowd. They love that stuff. They love the family-oriented stuff, uh, you know, no cussing and uh, just, again, like, the old-school way of doing things, which, again, it works. It's Simple like- is always better. Simple is better. The tried and true, right? Like the reason why it's worked for a hundred years is because it works every time you do it, right? Facts. Facts. So let's keep moving down that coast a little bit. ESP or ESPW, the tag team picture right there with the titles and everything, reality era. You guys are right smack in the middle of it. Uh when you oh. get into the Virginia, um, what's the Virginia independent scene like? It's one of those it's not quite a JCP territory anymore. It was kind of the in betweener a lot during the back in the day. So what's it like now? What's the Virginia independent scene seem like now in 2023? Man, it's mixed. So like when ESPW was under different management, I'm not going to discuss that situation, but when it was under different management, um, that crowd was like, it was or like the crowd in the atmosphere is like, as far as working, like it was like, it was like indie, like, you either get indie or you would get the old school. So it was very mixed, but it seemed like mostly indie because there was a lot of stuff. Yeah, it was it was definitely. I would say it was more indie for like ESPW. That was in uh, Chincoteague, Chincoteague, Virginia. And then what's crazy if you go down like if you don't even if you just keep straight past Chincoteague, you get down to Sherrington, Virginia, and that and they haven't had wrestling there in over like thirty years. So we brought them uh, one CW. We we came down there and did a show. And that crowd loves the old school antics too. Like, so it, it all depends. Like Virginia's like, it's like, it's got its different parts, you know, universal fans, different, different type of fans. Do you like that though? Kind of that it keeps it fresh for you guys as much in the ring as it does for the fan setting on our side of the barricade. Does it, does it keep it fresh every night for you? If you go into a crowd and you're like, okay, I know here they're going to want me to mouth back or they're going to want me to play to them. Or if you go somewhere and you're like, these guys are going to want me to bump hard, bump fast, big spots. Like, do you plan each match knowing the crowd you're going to be working for? You know, that's a good, that's a good question. Cause like when I know when I'm going out of town, like Delaware is my home for like one CW's my home. So when I go out of town, like for like Jimmy Love, like I'm still me, but I like it's a different like cause that's family, you know what I'm saying? Like one CW's a family oriented show, so I can't really get away with too much stuff. Some of the stuff that like with with Pure Pro, I can get away with a little bit. You know? So that that crowd. Also like uh like ATCW was another one. That was a good. That was another promotion. I did that. That was in. Uh, I can't remember what part of Virginia that was in, but that was another crowd that was like with the indie stuff. But they also like old school too. Like, like it was. It was pretty good. That was pretty good too. Going through your your match list and just kind of doing it all, I see you do a lot of work as a singles guy and as a tag team tie. They're both very different stories you got to tell in the ring when you do them. Do you have a preference in either way, working as a singles or working in a tag? You know, I used to be like, man, I don't want to do singles. This is too much work. Or like, you know, I mean, I don't want to mess nothing up. You know, when I was younger, still coming up. And but when I got out of that shell of always doing tag team wrestling, once I got out of that shell, it was just like, man, I can do this. Like, this is nothing. But I do love tag teams. So reality era, like me and Bad Bad Banks, um, that we've been that's we, we came up together kinda. And but then that's when like he did his thing and I had to go back and do my thing. So like when we were at uh good old Sandy Fork, Delaware with the uh Briscoes, Mark and Jay, God rest the soul. Um, and that's where we started. Anti awesome. Like we were all the trio or whatever. But me and Banks just naturally 
had this chemistry. So when the tag team opportunity came up, I was like, oh, you want to tag with me? Like, it was an honor. You know what I'm saying? He's been doing his thing for years, been one CW champion. He's been multiple time tag team champion. Like, so, and then to to be able to honor Jay and, you know, Mark and Jay Briscoe with the tag team title and we got the ESPW tag team titles, that was just awesome. Like, you know, like we did this. We fought like two uh, uh, guys that, you know, who, who would have known that the Briscoes would have just looked at us and been like, oh, yeah, we see something in them, you know? And what's crazy is it was four different generations of guys trained by the Briscoes in that match. Uh, Christian Tarr and Dustin Tarr, shout out to them. So speaking on it and, uh, you know, losing Jay was a huge hit for the wrestling community across the board, both for fans and workers. Speaking specifically as being a Delaware native and being part of that tight knit community. Um, how important was Jay Pugh to the wrestling community in Delaware? And Jammin was like, he, like at first, like I knew they were, I knew they were big locally here. Like, you know, everyone looked up to him, but I didn't know it was so huge. Like, Jay was doing the Pee Wee foot, uh, coaching fo- uh, football. Uh, they they always do grat like lawn landscaping and stuff, landscaping. And I just didn't know that they were like the pillars of Laurel, pretty much of Laurel, Delaware. You know, like that. Th- it was a big shot to, to Laurel, Delaware. It might be a small town, but that was definitely like a blow. You know, like every the world felt it, but they felt it more than anything. Delaware is not a big place. So I know like in Tennessee, in the small communities, if, you know, if somebody important to the community, especially down here, it's high school football, man, high school football and church. So right. like, if, if a high school football coach or something passes, it hits the community hard. And uh, I, I could see that in such a small community up there. You know, I, I was I was curious about that. Let's uh let's get back on you for a little bit. Um, also, one thing I noticed, indie wrestling, it's tough to get booked sometimes. When I was going through, looking through your socials and looking over your stuff, figuring out what we wanted to talk about, you've got a packed schedule of dates. Uh, so this question is not so much about wrestling. It's more so how are you doing the work-life balance? Because being a full-time independent wrestler is a tough job. Living a life is a tough job. Having relationships and keeping your family straight is a tough job. How are you keeping it all straight together, man? Man, I, I got, I'm got i blessed enough and lucky enough that my job, I work Monday through Friday. So I get the weekends off. Now, that what works. does suck is some promotions run on a Thursday that I actually wanted to get into. So there comes the whole, like, finding that balance. So you just take the greater, like, I can at least I can wrestle Saturday and Sunday. You know what I mean? Or Friday, I can wrestle Friday night if I wanted to. So I can get three days out of that one day that I can't get. So I kind of take it like that. And the balance, actually, it's not as bad as, like, it could it could be. So I'm not even upset about that, especially with the older generation I had to go through. So I can't even complain. <laughs> Like uh, I do my drives, you know. One of my things I like to to hear about is the the road stories. I've had a chance to talk some old heads, uh, some of the guys from the seventies and eighties scenes. They talk about how important that life on the road was. Uh, going between stops, getting to know the guys you were working with and the guys you work with every day. Um, what's the, what's it like being on the road now, though, in today's wrestling? In today's wrestling, it's like I think there's just so so many like guys that are working that like most people have a vehicle so like i've only had i don't even think i've, I've had people i have like one person ride with me once but like everyone usually kind of like goes on their own like except for this like uh at the uh, training center like we'll tell them like hey we got these matches coming out of the seat open if you guys want to come along and check out some of the shows you know except for stuff like that but I do remember an instance back, I think it was like 2017 or 18, when I got the ride with uh, Ty Austin and JT Funk. We got the, that, was, uh, that was pretty funny because it was just some funny things that were going on. Just some shenanigans <laughs> on the road? Yeah, man, just, just cracking jokes and having a good time with the boys you know, and supporting them, you know. It's all about putting the boys over, even at the end of the day, you know, where everybody loves wrestling, right? Like yeah, whether you, you know, the, the in-ring stuff, the outside ring stuff, like the beef in the locker rooms at the end of the day, like everybody loves the sport. 
Um, so you, you kind of, you brought up Ty, you've got, you know, you'll go against Ty in Delaware one week and then you'll be against somebody like Everest and, you know, down somewhere or, you know, you'll be all over that East coast. You'll be going against opponents that are bigger and smaller, lots of speed, lots of size, lots of strength. When you adapt, um, do you, do you kind of change based on the person or do you stay true to who you are? I try to stay true. So what I'll do, like, we'll take Evers, for example. You know, he's a big guy. He's, big dude. He's huge. So with him, it's like, all right. So I, I go over what I what I can do, what I do, my character, my gimmick. And I'm like, all right, we can still make this work. Like, there's no need for me to be like, I got to take out of this guy's playbook or take out of someone else's playbook. Still stick to true to who you are. Just be smart and be creative because there's always a way. That's why they call it ring psychology. Do you watch a lot of tape? Do you go back and watch matches from guys that you, you take inspiration from or, you know, that are similar to you in ring stylistically? Do you watch a lot of tape and be like, okay, and start figuring out how to, uh, to kind of adapting who you are over time? Man, that's all I watch is old territories. Like, my my go-to has always been Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Um, guys like uh, uh, Leroy Brown, uh, Bad News Brown, guys like that, you know all old school territory styles because it worked you know what i mean and the only thing i might do i might tune it up a little bit just to make it you know for the now and day but that's pretty much it none of my stuff that i do is anything fancy or indie-ish but it, it works it's still like we said it once before we'll say it again the tried and true um so talking about things that work um, this is kind of a deep question, okay? When I had a chance to sit down with Al Snow, um, big trainer, OVW, everybody remembers Al Snow from back in the day. Um, I was kind of getting into a little bit of ring psychology with him, and we were talking about telling a story. He told me that for him, the once upon a time for every story he tells is with a collar and elbow tie-up. He's like, that's the perfect way to start telling a story in the ring. If you look at the way you wrestle a match, what do you think your once upon a time is going into the rink? What's the perfect way for, you know, the big D Tiberius to start a match? Usually I say when you hit that curtain, but yeah, that depends on the crowd. So it's definitely that collar elbow. Because once you get there, you're establishing who's the good and who's your bad guy. Like what's the what's what's the struggle here, you know? That's your opener. Okay, so you agree that's still the the quintessential yeah. opening to a match then. A good trainer will tell you that and I got a good trainer. Shout out to uh, Mark Harlan. <laughs> I like it. That's why I'm curious, that, man. I said at the beginning like this conversation's always so different from person to person because it's all about experience and what they've seen and how they've gotten through the business. Um, one of my other favorite things is when people talk about their character work, they say they take things from their everyday life. They turn it up to 11 to, to take the best parts of their personality and bring them out in the rink. What parts of your everyday life are you turning up to 11? Well, I always said, like, I always had this belief of like, uh, like I don't follow like the man-made religions. Like I believe in God, have a connection with God, but I always said you're a God of your own world. Like you're in control of your, your decision, the choices you make you're in control of, you know what I'm saying? So I just amped that up. And then the whole, like, you know, I'm proud of where I come from, my, my, my people, everything that we've done and stuff. So I wanted to put that out there because there's not too much, you know, representation as there should be, you know, but that's where I get it from. And then that's when it just kind of rolled into the whole, like, uh, the big D thing. I'm actually starting to put like my actual name into my stuff. Like everything's starting to, feel natural now at first it was it was a little rough patch you know but i learned to just be yourself but amp it up so now it's starting to be a little more natural promos um, are feeling more natural everything just being yourself and just figuring out how to be that version of yourself i guess mm -hmm. um when i do my due diligence one thing i always look for is to see if you've crossed path with any of the boys that have been on the show before um you have and a really really big just raw motherfucker in the ring i'm sorry excuse my french and that is o'shea edwards the big bad oh. kaiju he is a beast what was it yeah, like rocking up with o'shea man given the circumstances of wrestling in a building with a low ceiling we just pretty much just had a big man fight like i'm talking <laughs> just chest to chest just laying it in 
uh, just slam and you get up, just slam, slam, get up, eat. Let's let's fight some more, you know. Just going head to head, and yeah, he was awesome. That was great. I like I watching him. him the second of that. Oh when, man, he is. I just watching these next couple months. He about to be snapping. You already see what he's got <laughs> coming up. That's man. He about to be on a whole nother level. It's crazy. So just sitting here, just having a great conversation. Uh, loving pro wrestling. Looking at it right now, where you're at. What do you love most about being a pro wrestler? For looking from a fan's perspective, just being you from the kid that was a huge fan back in the day to where we're at now. Just you know, pull the curtain back. What's your favorite part about the job? My favorite part is the camarade, like the brotherhood. Um, like I found the like these guys that I've worked with a couple multiple times to be more family than friends that I've known for years or even actual family at times. Um, it's definitely that brotherhood and and then of course like the aspect of like I used to look up like if I was going through something when I was younger, you know what I mean, wrestling always took away, you know, any thoughts of that. You know, what I mean for those two hours and for the original attitude air, you know, Monday night raw, you know, um <clears throat> in the ruthless aggression era, you know. Them two hours was like nothing to phase my life. I might have had a bad day at school and, you know, got my ass whooped by my parents or whatever and watch wrestling. None of that stuff ever happened, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the one thing that I think if my if a little version of me was looking up, like, you know, that's still, like, I think, like, man, that's so cool, you know? It's still cool. It's still cool. I'm 38 yeah, years old, man. Cool, it's man. still cool every day. It is still cool, man. <laughs> Um, this is also kind of talking about going back and talking to a, a little bit younger version of yourself. If you had a chance to go back to day one, night one, match one, and you're looking at rookie Tiberius and you're like, okay, this is your advice. What advice are you going to give that man today where we sit right now? Drop the ego. Drop the ego. Learn. Drop the attitude. And stop acting like you got to prove others that, like you're – you got it. Like, just listen, learn. That's what I would tell myself because I had a hard time with that and I didn't even know it. And yeah, it's crazy. All right, T this is the part, man. I always close every time the same way. Five random that have nothing to do with wrestling. I got your five queued up. You ready? I'm ready. All right. You're, you're going out. You've had a great show. You're at a, a pub or a bar. What's your drink of choice or your cocktail of choice? I like a Long Island iced tea. Short, sweet, get your punch, get the job done quick. Yes, sir. All right, another uh, another trip in the nostalgia machine. What was your favorite childhood cartoon? Oh, man. Ah, it's got to be Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes, always a solid pick. Yeah, that, yeah. I ask a lot of times what somebody's favorite food is. Not for you this time. What is the one food you refuse to eat? What is your least favorite food on the planet? Potato salad. Really? Just, just what about potato? Just out of curiosity, as a you know, being from the South, that's like you know, right after church every Sunday, everybody right. eats potato salad. What don't you like about potato salad? Man, I got food poisoning once from uh, like a barbecue I was at, and it made me throw. <laughs> and I never was a person to throw up, and that that changed my whole life right there. I was like, I don't know. I'll okay, never that's, do a good enough, that's a good enough reason to never eat it again. Um, <laughs> question number four. What is that one guilty pleasure song you like, but you're always like, man, if one of the boys heard me listen to this, I'd never hear the end of it. What's your guilty pleasure song right now? Hey, yo, uh, sync, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that always gives you a little bit of a sense of personality in somebody when you're when they drop an sync song or like a, I got somebody last week drop Justin Bieber on me and I was not expecting Justin <laughs> Bieber from like a six foot eight madman, you know? And he was like, yeah, that Justin Bieber song's dope. And I was like, didn't see that coming. <laughs> All right, I was wrong. One of yours does have to do with wrestling. So question number five, in your opinion, who do you think is the most underrated wrestler that you've ever seen? It could be indies, it could be pro, anybody. Just somebody you think should have gotten more praise than what they got. Their come up and get their roses, however you want to say it. 
I'd say the Briscoes. I can 1,000% agree. I've got the Briscoes on my wall. I had a chance to meet them a few times, and they were rock stars. So, all right, T, we did all the damage we could do. I told you it'd be an easy half an hour. This is everybody's favorite part, though, because I shut the hell up. I tell you to put yourself over, tell everybody where to find you, plug your socials and what you got coming up. Hey, man, you can look for me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Tiberi Sasante. And I got a couple of events coming up. If you are in Delaware, you have to make your way out to Houston, Delaware, May 20th this Saturday. It is 1CW doing the Balls Mahoney Memorial Battle Royal. you got to come to that. And then also in Chevrolet, Maryland, we got fight. And you get to see Tiberius Sasante going against the hitman for hire, Mr. Grimm. And that should be real fun. Definitely don't want to miss out. Well, Tiberius, man, I'm going to let you off the hook. I appreciate you taking some time out of your Wednesday and hanging about and chatting about some wrestling with me, bro. Hey, no problem, brother. Have a good one. You as well. For the Big D, Tiberius Asante, I am the Will Gray. Thanks for stopping by and listening, my people.